It's Tuesday, January 22nd. Welcome to Pastor Bob Daily. My friend Spencer on Facebook says, My father is a very religious man. He reads the word and prays fervently, but he is constantly abusive verbally and sometimes physically. What scriptures he reads, he uses to prey on and degrade myself, my mother, and sibling. My personal opinion is that the Bible should be used with love, even to reprimand. My father uses it for malice and spite. I admit that I am weak in my faith and I do not read the Bible as I should, but any sensible follower knows or should know that God's word is used with love and the intent to build us up as any person with a sense of common decency. Spencer, there are so many people these days that use the Bible as malice, and they really do. So many that feel like they have an opportunity because the Bible tells them to point a finger and to and to uh, correct everyone around them, and that's not exactly the case. You know, Jesus himself said that the foundation of everything we do is love. It's, again, the greatest commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your guts. It's a Pastor Bob paraphrased. <laughs> love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love, love, love. Love God, love your neighbor, love you. And that was what Jesus said. That's what he felt like was the most important thing. Not just because it's important to love, but also because it's important to interpret everything through the eyes of love. That means the Bible as well. And when you begin to read the Bible through eyes of love, you get something a little different. You know, my personal prejudice can make me see anything. Seriously. If, I'm already have, if I already have an agenda towards a certain thing, most likely I'm going to continue that agenda and see points for that agenda in anything that I read, in any book in any situation, including the Bible. Is that actually what the Bible is saying? Does it tell us to have malice? Does it tell us to be verbally abusive to people and justify it with Scripture? Absolutely not. But you see, sometimes we use it that way according to our own agenda. And I think that's what Jesus had in mind when he said, the foundation for everything is love. The foundation for your heart, for your mind, your agenda, for everything is love first. Why? Because if you can't interpret things through the eyes of love, then you do not have God's correct interpretation. Pretty cool. So how do you get that love? Well, the Bible says that uh, love comes from God. God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He loved us first. Where does my love come from? The Holy Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, etc., etc. They'll know we are Christians by our agape, by our love, the love that God gives us. So in other words, the more you develop a relationship with God, the more you find his love begins to permeate your soul and your whole life. And that's what begins to allow us to interpret these kinds of things correctly. Love, love, love. Love God, love your neighbor, love you. So that's where we start. And Spencer, I'm sorry that you're going through that with your father and I hate to say it, but I I know a lot of people who are like this, and uh, it's tough to correct them because they feel like they are already correct, and it's hard to move them. But Spencer, you don't have to follow in those footsteps, and by the way, um, I think my faith is weak sometimes too. That's why we all need God's strength in following him. But Spencer, you don't have to follow the same route. And uh, you can be a beacon of love to your family and to those around you if, if you see the problem with this and you correct it. And when you correct it, at least you can pass it on to your mother and sibling and 
to your friends and your family one day. That's the important thing. Love, love, love. God bless you. Have a great day.